Assalamu alaikum wa Hello everybody, how are you today? Uh, in Egypt uh, we have a little bit uh, cold but uh, sunny days. Uh, I, have said, I have seen something very interesting and I would like to share with you. It's a summit uh, for America and Canada and Mexico and they, they said uh, interesting uh, subjects I wanted to share with you all. I hope you enjoy it because it will change the world what they said uh, there in this summit. I wish you a good time and uh, Uh, take care. Let us uh, listen what they will uh, say. And we also have their respective delegations, representatives of the media, and people following us through internet, through the social media. Let's welcome. to Presidents and Prime Minister Joseph Biden, Jr., President of the United States of America. You have the floor, sir. President, for hosting the Prime Minister and me for the 10th North American Leaders Summit. This is a magnificent forum. And uh, we're true partners. The three of us working together with mutual respect and a genuine like for one another to advance a safer and more prosperous future for all of our people. And uh, the reason for this summit, this trilateral relationship, are so impactful is because we share a common vision for the future grounded on common values. And I mean that sincerely, common values we share in our countries. Since becoming president, I've been laser focused on rebuilding the U.S. economy from the bottom up and the middle out, not the trickle down economy, from the bottom up and the, and the middle out. It works because the wealthy do very well and everybody else does well too, but everybody does well. And uh, from the bottom up is means investing in priorities for working families. The United States has made historic bipartisan investments in infrastructure and innovation that are already beginning to deliver concrete benefits to the American people, and I would argue it will ultimately reap benefits for the entire North America. We renewed our dependence our deepen, and deepened our cooperation uh, for uh, our closest friends and allies, none closer than Mexico and Canada to take on the biggest challenges facing the region and, quite frankly, the world. Because there can no longer be any question, none, in today's interconnected world. We cannot wall ourselves off from shared problems. We are stronger and better when we work together, the three of us. And together, we've made enormous progress since our last summit, from COVID, fighting COVID-19 and strengthening our ability to address public health threats to investing in and building a 21st century workforce. The top of our shared agenda today is keeping the North America the most competitive, prosperous, and resilient economic region of the world. And the strength of our economic relationship among our nations not only supports good paying jobs in all of our countries, but it generates tremendous growth. Now we're working to a future to strengthen our cooperation on supply chains and critical minerals so we can continue accelerating our efforts to build the technologies of tomorrow right here in North America. This summit, this summit also builds on the continual consultation and cooperation with one another to take on the challenges that impact all three of our nations. Our entire hemisphere is experiencing unprecedented levels of migration, greater than any time in history. And North America, at the North America Summit Leader and hosted in Washington in 2021, we launched the idea of a regional-wide approach, a regional-wide approach to a regional-wide problem. The idea is declaration on migration and protection, which 21 countries ultimately adopted at the Summit of the Americas 
six months ago. And we're working together, especially with our North American partners, to fulfill our commitments under that declaration. They include the policy I announced last week to expand safe and legal pathways for immigrants from Nicaragua, Cuba, and Haiti. And we're seeking a better life here in the United States of America. We also want to thank you, Mr. President, for stepping up to receive into Mexico those not following the lawful pathways we've made available instead of attempting to unlawfully cross the border between our countries. On my way here, I stopped in El Paso, Texas, to see the situation from my own eyes and to meet with U.S. border security officials. It's putting real strain on the communities in both Mexico and the United States. We're working together to address this challenge in a way that upholds our nation's laws and protects the human rights of migrants facing desperate circumstances. We're also working together to take on the scourge of human smuggling and the illegal drug trafficking. In just the last six months, our joint patrols in Mexico have resulted in the arrest of more than 7,000, 7,000 human smugglers. We've seized more than 20,000 pounds of deadly fentanyl at the border. And today, we've discussed how all three of us can continue to deepen and strengthen our shared efforts to cut off the flow of illegal fentanyl, including by tackling the precursor chemicals used in synthetic drugs as we uh, go after the laboratories where they're made and the stash houses where they're stored. We also talked about meeting our commitments to make North America a clean energy powerhouse. And I believe that's within our grasp. And a global leader in addressing the climate crisis. That means working together to promote zero emissions vehicles, to build charging stations for electric vehicles that are completely across our international borders. It means exploring shared markets for clean hydrogen. And it means working together to meet our ambitious commitments under the Paris Agreement, including tackling methane and black carbon. And finally, as three vibrant democracies, we recognize our greatest strength is our people. Let me say that again. Vital democracies, we are, and our greatest strength are our people, the strength of our people. And the key to our competitive edge in the world is our incredible diversity. So together, we're working to address the inequities that for too long have played historically marginalized communities in each of our nations to make sure everyone gets a fair shot. It's one of the smartest investments we can make for our future, and we're going to make it together. So Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, I'm honored to stand with you today, and I'm grateful to have both of you as partners, and I might add friends, as we work together to realize a shared vision for North America. Thank you very much. Excellency, Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, mi amigo. Thank you for having us here in Mexico City. President Biden, my friend, thank you for all your hard work and your valuable insights in today's meetings. As a continent, we are unique. We are three large democracies committed to freedom, human rights, equality, and creating real opportunity for everyone. We share deep ties as friends and trading partners. Au cours des 30 dernières années, During these 30 years, the economies of Mexico, U.S., and Canada have become closely tied because of NAFTA. This trade agreement helped our economies grow and created millions of good employments and the trade amongst our borders drew investors from the world over. Now, competitive in the world. It makes sense why. Combined, we are home to half a billion people. We have an extraordinarily strong innovation ecosystem. Our combined GDP is larger than that of the European Union. And 
as leaders. We are all dedicated to driving economic growth that supports the middle class and those working hard to join it. These are all foundations of a strong and resilient continental economy. People remember what happened just a few years ago when the certainty of this partnership was in question. Investors, businesses, workers and citizens all worried about what would happen. When free trade is at risk, that isn't good for competition in the global market. Thankfully, the belief in free and fair trade won the day. We renegotiated and we got an even better deal. To put it simply, we are and always will be stronger together. The world today is facing a lot of uncertainty, with the rise in authoritarian leaders causing global instability and the high cost of living putting stress on families at home. It's important that we come together as leaders and as friends to look at ways to make our economies more resilient. Today we discussed how we can build reliable value chains on this continent for everything from critical minerals to electric vehicles to semiconductors. This is good for workers, good for consumers, and good for communities across our countries. La COVID-19 COVID showed us the importance of our supply chains and economic resilience, the importance of being prepared, being ready to face a new pandemic and try to prevent it. Today, we spoke about a way to improve our cooperation in the realm of health services in order to be ready to intervene. We further do our work to build a clean economy. Things like clean energy, including hydrogen, manufacturing zero emission vehicles, and encouraging more people to adopt them. This is an enormous opportunity for workers and for business. On doit tous prendre part à la we should all be part of climate action. Government and private sector should work together to attain the 2030 goals and objectives. These goals are not only about reducing pollution to get to the Paris objectives. They have to do to our engage with our engagements to preserve 30% of our lands and oceans in 2030. In last COP15 in Montreal, Canada um, convened of, of the countries around the world, and we reached a historic agreement to preserve and protect na nature. This is essential for the health of the economy. Mexican and American friends committed so strongly to protecting clean air, clean water, and a brighter future. Canada is also pleased to see all three countries take steps to more to build towards building a more diverse, equal, and inclusive society. A society where there is opportunity for everyone, where women and girls are politically and economically empowered, including indigenous women and girls. Where the benefits of growth are felt by workers and families across the economy. By doing this, we create a more stable, prosperous and equal future and we build economies that work for all North Americans. We made progress on a lot of different things today. There's a lot going on in the world right now and as North American leaders we recognize the roles our countries play in being a source of stability and security not just in the region but around the world. The summit has been productive this summit was extremely fruitful. We were able to reiterate our vision and the force of our partnership. Coming year, and I look forward to hosting you both in Canada for the next North American Leaders Summit. Thank you. Merci. Gracias.